Hi there guys, this is Don from Pronatech. Today's video, I'm gonna be doing a review of the 200 amp Hynade AC-DC TIG welder. Uh, I get a lot of requests for reviews and I generally don't uh, accept a lot of them because a lot of them, there's so many inexpensive TIG welders out there that have just flooded the market. But when I see one come along that has the ability to do AC-DC TIG welding so that you can weld aluminum and it's affordable, I agreed to do a uh, review of their welder. Because I think uh, the average Joe welder who's wanting to get into welding aluminum especially uh, and looking for an entry level AC-DC welder, uh, this is one of the brands that they're going to be looking at. So in today's video, I'll show you the features, um, how it works, and go over the pros and cons of this welder, and show you uh, how it works and how it welds. All right, let's get to it. All right, so let's talk about what this welder comes with. Uh, you get a size 17 uh, air-cooled torch. Uh, this is pretty standard for a 200 amp uh, air-cooled setup. Uh, most of the welders out there in the 200, 175 to 200 amp range come with a size 17 TIG torch. Uh, it's perfect for 200 amps or less. Uh, it does come with uh, a long handle, a short handle for tightening your tungsten. Uh, it comes with I think three or four collets, three ceramic nozzles and so it's basically it, it'll get you going if you're going to do a lot of TIG welding with it I would suggest you know buying more uh, and I would also suggest if you're gonna weld aluminum get a the gas lens kits are kind of the standard now for welding aluminum and that's one of the things that I would definitely suggest I did weld with the torch just as it came so that I could see just how it welds uh, without a stubby kit in it and it did great. So uh, the way it comes, you can definitely weld aluminum or you know stainless or carbon steel with the TIG. It works great. So what it comes with for consumables will get you started, but you're definitely going to need to order uh, some more, obviously, once you get going. It does come with a uh, arc welding clamp so that you can uh, clamp your electrodes and do stick welding. It also comes with a pretty good size heavy duty ground clamp. It's, it's got a lot of power and it does have uh, the copper going from both sides of the jaws. Cheap ones, they only do one side of the jaw and I, I don't care for that. I like it better with this with copper jaws and the jumper between the two. So this is a good ground that it comes with. Other than that, um, it does come with a manual that uh, is pretty comprehensive. I had no problem getting the welder set up, but I've used uh, these types of welders before, a bunch of different types. So I'm kind of used to the interface, but even if you haven't, just from my uh, setup I'm going to show you, you'll be able to see uh, how to get going and how to get it set up. But the manual will uh, give you an overview and if you have any questions, you can go ahead and leave them in the comments and I'll be happy to help you. So, let's, I'll show you the, uh, the interface and how it gets set up and then after that I'll show you uh, some welds and how well this thing uh, does weld. Alright, let's get to it. Alright, so let's go over some of the features of the Hynade 200 amp uh, AC-DC welder. This welder is also uh, dual voltage. It will uh, work on 120 volts or 240. Uh, I've got it hooked up right now to 120 volts. So let's turn it on. With it set on TIG, uh, it'll go up to 160 amps on regular 120 volts. And since this is also a stick welder, it will do up to 140 amps as a stick welder. 
which is pretty good because it only goes up to 160 amps even on 220 or 240 volts. So being able to get 160 amps just on regular uh, home voltage is is pretty uh, pretty good. I think that's you know for your average Joe welding in his garage you could get a lot out of this welder at 160 amps. All right, I've got it hooked up to 240 volts. And so I'm going to turn it on and show you that uh, it auto senses the voltage right here. So it knows automatically. It comes with an adapter that you plug it into and then plug it into 240. And it automatically knows that you've uh, upped the voltage. So there's no switches, no nothing to do. Uh, going back and forth between voltages, it automatically limits it to 160 on TIG. Once you get it up to 220 or 240 volts, it'll let you go all the way up to 200. And on stick, it'll let you to go to 160. So it has pretty standard uh, functions. I'm going to zoom in here so you can see the control panel and uh, see how simple this is to use. So right now we have it in AC TIG mode and you can see that it's set on amperage is what it's showing. Uh, it's ready to work, it's sensing 220 volts on the panel. It's set to 2T which is just basically uh, if you press the start button it'll start welding, when you let off it'll stop. If you put it to 4T when you touch uh, the pedal or the torch It'll start welding even after you let go of the button. And then when you want to stop, you have to press the button again to make it stop. Down here we have either torch control or pedal control. It's very simple whether you're using one or the other. Uh, one of the things I would mention is that this welder doesn't come with a foot pedal. It comes with just the uh, TIG torch that has the... Uh, switch on it so that you can start and stop the arc. It doesn't have variable amperage on the torch. So if you're going to be doing, you know, a lot of precision TIG or doing aluminum welding, I definitely suggest you buy the foot pedal. Uh, it's probably the most important accessory, especially if you're going to be welding aluminum. Uh, over here you can see that we have kind of a ladder pyramid shape uh, for the controls. And what you do is, uh, like a lot of these welders, this center button, you press it and it'll scroll through all the uh, settings available for that uh, welding parameter. And all you do is press the button and it'll go to, uh, this is post or down slope. This is amps for finish. And this is post flow of gas. And then we have AC frequency, AC balance. If you're on pulse, it has the pulse frequency, as in how frequent you want the pulses to be. It also has a spot setting if you want to do spot welding uh, with your TIG. It also has pre-flow, starting amps, upslope, peak amps, and then the pulse frequency, and then the base amps. And the one is the pulse frequency it does it, and this is the actual hertz frequency of pulse. So this is a, uh, it'll do pulse in AC and DC TIG. All right, so let's get to the uh, review and, and uh, show you some of the welds. I'll, uh, I'll do some uh, different thicknesses and show you some different types of joints and how it welds, and, uh, and we'll go from there. Okay, so here we're going to do some uh, aluminum TIG welding. I've got some quarter inch plate TIG uh, tacked together so that uh, it's ready to go. And so I'm going to run a bead on an outside corner. And uh, I've sped up the footage in the middle here so you don't have to sit through the whole uh, welding process. And then at the end I'll show you the weld. And uh, that's how nice this uh, Hynade welder does on quarter inch. 
Very nice. I'm uh, I'm quite impressed. All right. So next, I have some 16th inch uh, diamond plate aluminum, and so I've got that tacked up. I'm going to run a bead across that. This is a little more difficult just due to the thinness, and uh, I've got that one set up on an outside weld, outside corner. And again, I've sped it up so that you can uh, see the results. And there it is. Uh, it did great. I'm very impressed how smooth and stable the arc is. It, uh, it welds even thin aluminum like this uh, very, very well. Okay, so I've got some 8th inch 6061 flat plate tacked together and so I'm going to run uh, a flat joint or butt joint it's known as with some 8th inch 6061. Alright, so here's the 8th inch and uh, I think it looks great. I'm uh, very happy with how this came out. Okay. So next, I've got some one inch uh, square tubing steel, and I'm going to stick weld. Just going to run a simple uh, butt joint on this. And uh, I was very happy with how this, uh, this welds very smooth. It has good, uh, good arc, no sticking. Very happy with it. All right, so here's a photo of all of the welds that I did with the Hynade 200 amp TIG. So you can see uh, all the different uh, thicknesses and sizes all together in one photo. All right, so let's get to the meat of this and what my review is of this welder. I have to say that for an entry level uh, ACDC TIG that is capable of welding aluminum, uh, I'm very impressed with this welder. It really surprised me as far as its ability to especially weld aluminum. I've tried some of the lesser expensive welders out there and uh, I was not impressed. Uh, some of them have a real hard time um, making a smooth arc and maintaining it. And one of the things that impressed me the most about this is that I've, I've had a couple of uh, entry level ACDC TIGs and one of the things, especially in the 200 amp range, they tend to really struggle at welding quarter inch aluminum. And I know 200 amps is uh, kind of at the upper edge of being able to actually weld quarter inch aluminum. So a lot of times when I had those welders, I had to do some preheating and things like that. That's just, you know, part of life if you, you know, don't have the amps to weld the thickness that you want. Well, one of the things that surprised me is welding quarter inch with this thing. It kind of blew my mind because I'm welding along and it had more than enough power to weld quarter inch, which that kind of really surprised me. In fact, about halfway through the weld of this one, this outside corner here, I had to actually let off because it, it was starting to, the heat was starting to run ahead of me and so I, my puddles were starting to get a little bit wide. So I had to back off and that's never happened to me before on a quarter inch uh, weld with a 200 amp TIG. So that kind of impressed me. I was, uh, I was pleasantly surprised how powerful this welder is uh, at welding aluminum. And so one of the other things that impressed me was I welded some 16th inch diamond plate, which a lot of times when welding aluminum this thin, it can be difficult for a welder if it doesn't have, uh, you know, a stable arc. And one of the things I was very impressed is the smoothness and the stableness of the arc allowed me to weld this with no problem at all. It was, it was, uh, I was very surprised uh, at, at its ability to weld thinner. Um, so I welded some quarter inch, some sixteenth, I did weld some eighth inch, and almost everything here that I welded was all 60-61. So it wasn't 
um, it wasn't easier aluminum. 30 series, a lot of times, a lot of people on camera will show you, you know, welding 30 series because it's a lot easier to weld. It's easier to keep a beautiful shiny puddle. So one of the things I like to check is, you know, how does it weld 6061? And this is all 6061 except for uh, the diamond plate. That's obviously, I believe diamond plate is 30 series. I'm not positive on that, but I, I believe that's what it is. Uh, and so it, it's always, you can tell just from the shine of the, of the puddle as it goes along that usually um, 30 series is always a lot shinier than 6061. I welded some stainless with it. This is some 3 16 plate and I stick welded uh, some 16 inch thick uh, 1 inch tubing just to see how it uh, welded with stick and it did great. Overall, I'd say this is an excellent entry level ACDC TIG if you're learning how to TIG, uh, especially learning how to TIG weld aluminum and you want to step up to that game. Uh, this is a great uh, TIG to start with. I was very impressed at the price point they have it at. I believe they're I believe they're selling it for six forty nine. At six forty nine, uh, there's nothing in the American market that can come close to that for a two hundred amp AC/DC TIG. So. A lot of people, you know, don't have thousands of dollars to put into a uh, TIG so that they can learn how to weld aluminum. Well, this welder gets you into welding aluminum for a pretty reasonable price, I think. So anyway, I think it's a, uh, it's a great value. I'm very impressed with this welder and uh, uh, I don't think there's anything that I could say negative about it. I couldn't find anything. The only thing that... Um, annoyed me a little was the fact that it defaults to the torch uh, when you turn it on. Uh, other than that, I couldn't find anything negative about it. Uh, it handled welding at 120 volts and 240 with no problem whatsoever. I switched back and forth just to try it out, make sure you know it adjusted fine. I can't really come up with anything else uh, that I could find for a negative. It's an amazing welder and an amazing value for such a small package and it only weighs about 25 pounds and it's easy to carry around your shop you can get it over you know move it around as long as you have your argon and your uh, you know your power close by or even with extension cords on 120 volts you could uh, you could really move this thing around and not be tethered to you know a great big welding car so overall uh, the review is very positive very impressed so I thank you guys for watching and if you have any questions or anything about this welder, feel free to leave them in the comments. I'll be happy to answer them. If you uh, like my reviews, you like my content, go ahead and subscribe, hit the bell. You'll get notified when I come out with new stuff. Also, I've got a bunch of projects that I'm putting out, so uh, a lot of cool TIG welding stuff. I'm just finishing up editing a uh, heavy-duty TIG uh, water cooler that I did uh, build from scratch. So that one's coming up soon. I thank you guys for watching and I'll see you on the next video. Thanks.